Hey guys, it's Sister Rock. Um, today um, I'm going to be talking about something a little bit more exciting than a grayscale portrait. Um, I have been messing around a lot with environment design, just something very, very simple, story based, uh, just some quick stories that I have in my mind. Um, and uh, I, I wanted to start off by explaining how important it is to make sure that your composition is intact. I used the simple golden ratio here by um, cutting the canvas in half two ways and then cutting in half again and again and again until I find my focal point. Um, I also follow up by establishing my wash. It's really, really important for environments after capturing a good cinematic framing using composition that you decide on the time of day and the wash, color of the light source versus color of the environment. Uh, so I love blue versus orange, so I wanted to try something a little bit more like that. I did have a vision in my mind where I wanted, to, where I wanted this to go. Um, I did um, know that I wanted something a little bit more exciting, something with a bit more gesture to it. So the little mouse character that I drew, or the ferret or whatever it is, um, was turning around really, really swiftly. There's a bit of a chase uh, going on, and he's holding some kind of artifact, and he's going to the portal to escape. So I wanted something a bit more exciting, but at the same time very scenic and beautiful, like an establishing shot. Um, and the mouth, mouse just running away as fast as possible uh, so that we have um, an establishing shot and an action scene all at once um, just to set up the, 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 the excitement, which is what you want to do when you're illustrating. You want to do more with less. Uh, so you want to have the establishing shot. You want to have something with a bit of a low camera to show the colossal shape of those pillars around him and have him large enough, but not too large to hide the environment, but just large enough that you can see his details. Um, so... The, the, like the main cylindrical shadows, uh, the light source, the presence of the mountain in the, in the distance, the placement of the portal were all deliberate. Nothing was accidental. So if anyone tries environments like this, you have to remember that all your choices have to be deliberate. They can't be, um, you know, just half in, half out. I'm going to place it here because it kind of looks good for now. You have to flip your canvas and assess whether or not it's in the best place possible for the story. Uh, so because I, I, I started off with such a large mouse and then I shrinked it down, the, I knew how to shrink it so that he's in a perfect position. He's not the focal point so much. He's a shared, he has, it's a shared focal point between the portal, uh, some pillars around him, his staff, and him. Um, so uh, I didn't worry too much about him being somewhere in the center. I didn't get a chance to finish this as much as I wanted to. I was running out of time. The summer came and I wanted to hike more so that I had more visual library when I paint more in the fall. So I, I, I didn't want to pass up any chance to hike. So I've been so busy uh, with that. Uh, but and it's definitely helped. I do recommend everyone gets outside and sees some stuff, sees some big rocks, sees some large trees. It'll really fill your mind up. It'll tell you, give, give you some props and know what to do with them in your visual library. Um, but apart from that, I uh, would have added a lot, uh, a lot more foliage, a lot more shrubbery, a lot more kind of like a, an abandoned portal that nobody uses because it's either dysfunctional and he's taking the risk anyway because it's exciting and he has to run away and he's going to take the risk with a, with, a, with a dysfunctional portal or that it's ruins and it's cursed and there's monsters and I did want to add little gargoyles or monsters or guardians or something similar to the grayscale monsters in Game of Thrones just hanging around around the pillars. I would have added that as well. That would have added a bit more um, busyness and a little bit more info in the, in the piece. Um, I did revisit this, so I painted most of it in one session, in one three-hour session. I wanted to revisit it and add those gargoyles, um, but I never did. I did revisit it for a second session just to finish off the, 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 the foreground vines and the pillar in the distance, the little arcway, um, which you'll see in a second. Um, but the most important thing about this whole scene is that you got to zoom, I have to zoom out again. After every single assessment, you'll see I zoom in and zoom out, zoom in and zoom out, because every single uh, application affects the, the composition in one way or another. Um, so I knew I had to tilt the canvas backward just now. I tilted the canvas back um, and added like a slight Dutch angle, and that was because the pillar on the far right was perfectly parallel with the edge of the canvas, which is very, very ugly. Uh, you don't want anything parallel or tangent. You want something more of two stuff crossing. You want cross crosses all over the place um, at angles too. Uh, they're really great for filling in areas that you want to have um, focal attention towards or line of sight. Um, a lot of the stuff that was a bit more difficult was about managing the fog, adding that eeriness, but allowing some of the beauty of the sunrise or the sunset, whatever it's going to be. 
uh, to take over as well. So there was a lot of white that I wanted to use, which was confusing to me. A lot of silhouettes I wanted to use for the shrubbery and the foreground stuff. And a lot of fog and stuff that is hidden and, and, and eerie and creepy and spooky, but using blue as well as a way to add that magical effect, a lot of purple. I didn't want to use green because I didn't want it to look evil. I wanted it to look mystical, almost Atlantean. Um, and that's why I stayed with blue. Uh, green has a very, very specific role in cinema and cartooning, which is more eerie, creepy, gooey, kind of like Scooby-Doo green or, or Disney green. Um, so I wanted to stay away from that as it was just already coming with so much uh, baggage of, you know, pre uh, the context. Um, so I stayed with the blue and brought in some of that yellow from the, from the back. I knew I wanted to have some subsurface scattering on him. I didn't want it to seem monochromatic. Um, but at the same time, the most beautiful scenes have minimal colors. Um, the scenes with full, uh, or at least the main color wash or analogous colors, the best scenes. So that m m colossal scene in Coco, um, that recent Disney movie, though it's uh, that the scene of the of the other world, um, though it was many many colors, they were all equally balanced with each, which, with each other based off a wash, a very cool purpley wash. Um, so that's obviously there. You're gonna see a camera on the side. That's my cat Ossie. I couldn't crop that out. Uh, because in the stream I had her up so that everyone can see her uh, so don't mind that um, so one of the biggest things that I wanted to do was have a very very um, kind of like uh, dewy or watery surface on the tiles uh, so that meant I had to reflect the character I had to reflect the pillars and I had to reflect the portal um, and then another thing that I really wanted to do was, was sun, like God rays, sort of, to show that this place is not just spooky, but also very divine um, and kind of like um, ancient and, um, you know, kind of like a priestess's uh, domain at one point or, or, or a temple at one point. Um, so it is in ruins and all of that, but it still has some of the old divinity in it. Um, I also really, really wanted to mess around with a partial cast shadow, so the character is just behind the main pillar here on the right. Uh, so I wanted him to be really, really dr like drowned in light in certain areas, so you get almost rim light white uh, because of that sunrise. Um, I see this as the scene that I would set up as like a lighting key or something for the initial story, uh, for the initial start of the movie or whatever it is, just that starting chase scene that sets up the story well. We've seen those so many times. Um, I think we've seen it in Hunchback of Notre Dame, that starting chase scene. Um, uh, so I really, really love establishing shots like that where you get to do more with less. And uh, you'll see in a second how I kind of work on the character. Every little bit I go back to the character and work on him and then move back and go back to the character and work on him. I didn't know if it was a him or a her. At one point it was a her. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I didn't want to depend too much on all of that. Uh, I did add that pink on the ears, if you can see, and I brought in some more fog uh, so that the foliage in the foreground can be take, uh, uh, revealed a little bit, uh, which I darkened a little bit extra and uh, blurred. Um, I also added slight little peaks of highlight on the leaves in the foreground shrubbery. Um, and uh, just around the uh, light, things get warmer towards the top corner and very cool towards the bottom left corner. That was another transition that I was thinking about in my mind when I was designing this. Uh, the one biggest problem that I have to report is that I have to keep turning on and off the fog, the fog layers so that I could render. Um, but turning them on and off made me feel like I was not getting the kind of distinction I needed between each element. Also, one big thing that you might face while painting environment designs is marrying elements to each other. So you can't just have a super, super clean cut edge on the base of the, of the pillar and then um, uh, just start off the ground right away. Nothing really works like that in real life. There's always a layer of uh, dust or something. There's always broken pieces of wood. There's always something there to, to, to kind of transition the pillar into the surface of the ground or a tree to the surface of the forest, or, or something like that. The only time you need a clean cut edge is if a character is just standing on the ground. But even then, if you look at the foot of my character, there's fog there. So remember, never have a clean cut between elements that are layered. Never layer things perfectly. Um, that is what happens when we end up, um, that's what we do, and that's how we end up separating the units from each other and make it feel like we are actually used some sort of cut and paste way of, you know, magazine cutout way of uniting 
all the elements or putting all the elements together they're not really blended together they're not really unified so we use fog we use dirt uh, we use some kind of lowering of intensity so that the edge of the base of the object with the surface that it's on are not perfectly cut from each other uh, because if they are if there's a perfect edge at the base of one of these pillars suddenly that will become a focal point so you want to avoid that as you can see here, I had to turn off all the fog in order to bring in the new elements I added, some vines from the top to make it feel like more top-heavy, like canopy of overgrowth. I really wanted that effect. Also, it frames the painting from the top so that I could have uh, more attention paid to the, uh, to the portal uh, because the pillars are just moving up higher and higher and higher. And I wanted the pillars to be high. I didn't want to cut them short just for the canvas. Um, having the pillars high meant that the eyes of the viewer were moving away from the canvas. So I had to cut them off using the vines hanging down. This was very experimentational. It was very, very um, sudden. It was just something I felt like doing. I wanted to mess around with color. It was just something to satisfy my need for color momentarily so I can go back to studies and teaching. Um, it wasn't something that I would say I put a lot of planning into. It was just that initial sketch that you saw. Um, that's really all that I did um, to plan it, um, which was enough planning, at least for me. It felt like enough planning. I got what I wanted out of the painting. Um, and I have a lot more like this um, kind of in mind. Um, I have a lot more where I want to use lines of sight or I want to use offset focal points like massive monolith, monolith rocks. I really love painting those. I'm not sure if you know, but I'm a big fan of Stonehenge. I love, I love seeing big rocks and big... Um, uh, cliffs and sudden sheer drops and I love seeing uh, fog and I love seeing really really um, dusk kind of colors together so I want to explore that a little bit just paint what I like but also at the same time force myself to paint in an arena where I'm not a master and I wouldn't say I'm a master at portraits but I'm a lot better at portraits um, and this this was a fun fun challenge um, that beam of light I put on the ground, that really tied the painting together. It really made the light feel more strong. You'll notice that things get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, and you'll have more contrast as you keep painting. Don't be in a rush to have contrast early on. That's going to be the demise of your painting because you will wash out a certain area that won't necessarily be white all the way through. Um, it might be white only in the hot spot, but you'll need something to be a little bit more dim towards the, the, the start of the light source or at the base of the light source. Um, so the staff, the character's detail, his whiskers, her ears, his whiskers, his ears, and the um, portal are all uh, now sharing a nice equal triangle of focal point. And I would have added more trees in the background. I just stopped painting it for some reason. I just didn't want to keep painting at it. I didn't want it to be something that I fall in love with and just keep working on. I kind of got sick of it. Um, it was more of a thumbnail sketch for me, and this is what I would refer to as a thumbnail sketch. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm you know, crazy about the character or crazy about the way I added the staff. The staff is very unintuitive or it's not so much a, a, you know, a unique design. I like having everything new. I feel like I did have a new character. I, I like the character's design. I like how long they are but how bent forward they are so that they can uh, show off that they're looking behind over their shoulder but they're also the staff is pointing forward toward the portal so that they look like they're rushing there. I feel like I like I, I like how I captured that. Um, some stuff that I would change is I would definitely go back and add more leaves as if the character had to push through a lot of overgrowth um, and so a lot of the leaves around them are kind of bent and broken um, to show that the, where they were traveling from. I would have loved to add those gargoyles hanging at the top with very very dangerous looking silhouettes and crouching and um, uh, I would have loved to add uh, some more beams of light coming through, some more detail on the character maybe, maybe a golden staff or the artifact in their hand, whatever it was that they were running away with that they, that they owned. Um, all of that is really stuff that I would have added. There's a lot of shoulda, woulda, couldas at the end of an environment sketch. Um, there's so many other ways to tell a story. It's, environments are so heavily story-based. They are so heavily story-based. You cannot paint an environment without a story in your mind. You have to know what the premise is, at least a premise. Uh, and I did have a premise. Uh, so because of that, I, there's so many other ways I could have told the story. That's why there's so many other options I could have used. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I, I uh, feel like I can just try that same gusto that I wanted to pursue, uh, that same desire to uh, paint a story that 
you know, an environment story that had more to do with the environment than the character. So he's heavily um, connected to his environment because he's being chased. It's got his, his aim, his goal. Um, so next time I want to work off of that as well. So I work off a certain energy. So the chase would be this one another time. I, I wouldn't really like to tell a story through rest or something. I like telling a story through plight. Uh, so maybe next time it would be a climb, something very steep, something very dangerous. Um, but yeah, that's it for this. A lot of thoughts. Uh, very, very, you know, it's a mouthful talking about environments because there's so many components that go into it. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed watching the process. It really isn't all that difficult as long as you have your story and thinking about your, and you're thinking about your horizon line and thinking about what it is that what you want to paint. For me, it was the large cliffs, the large monoliths, the large uh, pillars, this tiny little glowing portal, all of that contrasting each other, and then the energy of the chase. So that's all I really had, a small little story. I didn't know what kind of creature I was going to draw, but I did know the kind of character I wanted, so a mage. Um, stealing something for the greater good or something like that. So I'll see you guys next month. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you everyone for your patronage. Bye!